Hey, Nathan, it's Ray Osher from IFM. How's it going? Good. How are you, man? Not bad. Can't complain. Welcome to the show. Thanks for calling in. I mean, this is kind of weird because, you know, we have famous people from our area, Massachusetts, even the general listening area. But you spent time right here in Milford where the station is located. Oh, yeah, totally. Uh, so I grew up, I was born in, I was born in Milford, moved to the Cape uh, when I was little. My parents moved kind of all around Massachusetts and then ended up back in Milford uh, for the end part of when I lived in Massachusetts. I moved away when I was 24 to California. And then you're so, uh, uh, Medway too, right? You spent some time in Medway? Yeah, we, uh, we lived in Medway for a little while. I went to high school there and then halfway through high school, we moved to Milford and uh, then I, I still stayed in school there. But my brother, Seth, uh, transferred. He went to Milford, and I just finished up in Medway while, so, while I lived in Milford. So it's safe to say you have some pretty deep ties here. Oh, yeah, totally. Uh, for sure. I, I definitely tell people I'm from Milford. So that's where I left from and uh, spent, like, a good 10 years there. My parents are still there. I was just in Milford the other day. Oh, no so, kidding. Uh, still connected there. Yeah, my parents are right there on Fruit Street. Um, I, I grew up visiting my grandparents. They were the Osiers, Ray and Dick's Bakery. And oh, yeah. So my, my parents go to Ray and Dick all, every birthday for both their birthdays to get the cakes. Like, that place is amazing. You have got to be one of the hardest working guys in Hollywood. <laughs> uh, I get that a lot. I think I, I definitely do a lot of stuff. Um, I'm aware of that. I just kind of go crazy if I'm not doing something. So, yeah, I'm definitely I'm getting tired now <laughs> after uh, I've been... I've been uh, filming videos since high school, and then, uh, then I did uh, work in you know uh, TV stuff and a lot of commercials in Massachusetts before I moved to California. And then I've done you know whatever, whatever amount of things I've done out here. For but I've just been busy for like I guess since 19, and I just turned 40, so 21 years of just hustling hard, and uh, just I won't stop. I mean, you can go to people can go to your your YouTube page and just see how busy you are. And speaking of YouTube, weren't you like one of the first guys to to really get the videos going on on YouTube? Yeah, well, you, you, they're at the beginning, uh, right? I, I, I was at the beginning. Two thousand five when, is when the site was created, and I had my first upload that year. Uh, it was on my friend Paul's uh, YouTube channel. He's actually from Upton. He lives out in LA now as well. He I, we, I uploaded to his channel because I didn't like make a channel i didn't really understand it but i had uploaded videos to another website before called adam films and uh then youtube came around i was like oh i'll put stuff here but then my channel that i currently use i I made that after using my friend's channel in 2006 so i have been on youtube since day one and my channel is on there since 2006 and i'm still still around and it's hard you're really fighting the algorithm it's like hard to be successful forever because you're fighting a broken website, to be honest, and it's, it's pretty frustrating, but I'm just going to keep making stuff, and if people happen to see it, great. But, <laughs> but that's not like my dream is to make my videos. I just do it because, like, what else am I going to do while I'm waiting and pursuing the bigger things, you know? But by making these videos, doing, so. you, you actually, I mean, you had to deal with Skittles for a while because of these videos, so they are leading to work, right? Yeah, totally. So I don't want to knock it, but, like, it's never my intention to just make videos, sure. and, like, to have to do literally everything film act edit make the music and you know do my own stunts i just like do it because i can because i have nothing else happening at the moment but yeah it does lead to actual work which is awesome and i'm very fortunate and lucky but uh you know the dream is to make film and tv and that's yeah. which my, me and my brother have done a good amount of so i'll just keep doing anything and everything until i die because i gotta like stay <laughs> satisfied <laughs> making stuff. well i really liked neutral i, I watched that a, a few weeks ago um, Thank you very much. Re- I mean, the, the tone, the character was amazing, and I wanted more from him, too. I want to learn more about this bounty hunter that you were playing, mm-hmm. um, only because he didn't come off as a bounty hunter. There was some weird reason why he got to where he was, and it wasn't yep, yep. It wasn't like that was his lifelong dream, but here he is as a bounty hunter. And, I mean, is there that's, that was a short film you put out, and most short films. I mean, some really do turn into bigger projects, but do you see mm-hmm. something like Neutral being turned into something else, maybe more of a story? Definitely. Neutral is it is currently a 22-minute short film right now, but uh, f- most films have three acts in them, and they're about 20 to 30 minutes long. So that is the first act of oh. Neutral. There will be two more chapters, I guess you could say. Uh, so basically 60 more minutes or so, and that would be the t- entire film. So what you watched was the beginning of the movie. And uh, when I tell people that, they get surprised. They go, oh, I didn't realize. Because 
I, I had to put something out. So I was like, I'm just going to shoot the first chunk of this film as a standalone thing. And then when I get more money, I'd like raise, I sold everything I owned for that movie. I raised $30,000 and then I sold literally everything I owned. I got 20000 more and made that what you saw. But I'm going to do two more, the two other chapters, and then it will be a complete full hour and a half film. And how about your character so, in uh, Milford, which just dropped yesterday? I was waiting all day. I, I got up. I get up early in the morning. I'm like four a.m. I'm like, oh, I'm going to watch Milford this morning. And you didn't drop until three. Uh, but it, yeah, yeah, I, I do it around that because apparently, according to YouTube, since the day day one algorithm rules are uploaded at noon L.A. time, three p.m. East Coast time. Because that's when kids are getting out of school, uh-huh. and that's when people are waking up or like taking lunch breaks at, at least on the West Coast. So it's a good time to put something where people will find it and click it. So I've always followed that rule. So I apologize for your, <laughs> your waiting on it. Are you happy with the response so far? It's only been a day. Yeah, I'm pretty happy. I was just reading comments uh, right when you called. So uh, right when we started the call, I was just reading comments and. Um, People are relating to it. So it's a very different movie than anything I've ever done. I do a lot of like Jim Carrey physical comedy, <laughs> Adult Swim style co- uh, content and, you know, shorts and stuff. And this is completely different. I just wanted to do something re- very real. And it's based on my life and my brother's life in Milford. It's also very fic- uh, fictitious and not really a char- not me, but their guy has traits of mine and my brother. So and, and, the, and I the town to itself is pretty either. fictitious as well. Yeah, so Milford, it says, we call it Milford because that's like where we live, but Milford is, there's also a million Milfords. I actually was just driving back from, I went all over the country the past like three weeks, and I was just driving up from uh, LA to uh, back here, and I'm in Portland right now, Portland, Oregon, that's where I'm living right now, and I drove through a Milford in Northern California, literally in the middle of nowhere, and that's the sign, I took a picture of it, it says population 70. Wow. So... Milford is really just a sort of symbolizes a small town, any small town in any country. I think people can relate to it because there's many Milfords and there's many other small towns. And that's pretty much that's the that's also a character of the film in a way, because it's just a place where you everyone who's there wants to get out or they say they want to leave. And because the grass is always greener and you don't like where you grow up. Like I have friends who were born in L.A. And like for me, L.A. was like, oh, my gosh, that's like the place to go like yeah. everyone wants to go to the palm trees and get away from the small town but i have these friends that want that this one friend she wants to move to rhode island and she grew up in la and she's like oh i just want to be in rhode island it's so magical there and i was like what there's nothing to do here <laughs> it's like cold and gray and she's like i love it because you know she's used to the sun all the 24 7 and that's boring for her so and based on yeah. that mindset I-, I love how the story wraps up i mean i got it it which is weird i'm not really an artsy kind of guy, but yeah. I, I really got it. I'm like, oh my god, that is that was an amazing ending. I don't want to give anything away, um, mm-hmm. but yeah, that was that was a lot of fun. I really enjoyed that. Um, I enjoyed the cameo in that. That was pretty cool. And there was oh, a yeah, couple. Yeah. There was a couple of Easter eggs as well. Uh, the the, uh, the girl in the basement uh, that you were living with had the Scarlet Hawks shirt on. Go Hawks! Oh yeah, I, yeah. We made a point of that. Um, wear the Milford uh, High School team shirt because she probably that girl probably grew up there and she still wears her shirt. And maybe she has like another kid, you know. But she's like in Milford for life. That lady and uh, the Honeydew Donuts stuff yeah, we yeah. had made. But yeah, we shot the whole thing in Portland, Oregon, because we were all in LA at the time, and uh, it was easier to get the crew and everyone that we worked with just up a short flight to Portland from LA. And Milford at the time was free. It was January when we shot it in 2019. It was a couple of years ago. So it was freezing, absolutely freezing in Massachusetts. And we're like, we can't really work outside in these conditions. So let's just go up to Portland. And then it turned out Portland was like negative zero on a lot of the days. And <laughs> it, it was just as cold. But it was a lesser trip. So, But it looks the same. Like Portland looks so much like actual Milford. And uh, we just had to get those little cameos for like the props and stuff. Like we had to make a honeydew thing because they don't have that out oh, here. Oh right. So well, why did you go with honeydew and not Dunkin' Donuts? Because Dunkin' Donuts now, like, like everyone when I grew up there, was like, go to Dunk, you know, go yeah. to Dunk Kid, get me uh, Dunkies. <laughs> so every, that was like Massachusetts for sure. But now Dunkin' Donuts is everywhere. Yeah, yeah. And it's not as you know local to New England. So we went with honeydew. Which like we felt was more of a like not everyone knows this and they'll be like what's honeydew and then you think oh it must be a local thing you know I don't know how big honeydew is I'm guessing it's like New England but I know it's not everywhere yeah it's it's big around we have two in Milford now you know, all, all Milford's moving up but <laughs> the thing is Milford is 
I feel like Milford and Franklin are like the two big towns in like the Metro West. Like in my yeah, opinion, I, that they have this stuff. stuff and they, if you have a target, then you're like a big. Town. Yeah, oh yeah, we so. got we got our target. And then um, I shop at the the Shaw's on 140, so that was kind of cool I to worked, hear too. I worked at that Shaw's oh, on 140. How was it then? That's why I have to mention that one. <laughs> That was actually one of my last jobs before I moved away to California. I, I worked there, and I went. You know, it's funny because I would go, I would go I go out on bag. This is so bad. I shouldn't even admit this. I go out to get uh, carriages. I go on carriage runs, <laughs> and I would get in my car and go home, have a snack. And this is I lived down on Fruit Street, back past the hospital, so it was a bit of a drive. And then I'd go home, have a snack drive back and go back in the store and do no carriages. And my boss never knew that. I, I like <laughs> literally laughed. I hated it, it so much. I hated New England. I wanted to get out of there. But then the after that, I worked as a grave digger in Massachusetts, in uh, Natick, and digging graves. And that's what I had saved up to uh, move to L.A. Oh, with. no kidding. So, I was going to say, yeah. working at Shaw's, I would have assumed caused you to leave. I couldn't take it. Just, I mean, I bagged groceries in many grocery stores. I worked at Bread and Circus before it was Whole Foods in Bellingham and I did a millions of odd jobs. I worked at Otis Air Force Base on the Cape, painting the runway. I've done it all, wow. and uh, but the final one was the grave digging, and uh, I was like, "All right, I have to get out of here. This is like the the lowest I can go. I'm literally subterranean at this point." Uh, my son did the same grave. thing. He uh, and he he knows your work as well. He's 25. He lives in L.A. now. He went out there because he was just sick of New England. He just there was nothing oh, out yeah, here for yeah. him. He wanted to do the film thing, and he's still trying but now he's into music but la is the place for oh, cool. him now definitely yeah i moved when i was 24 uh and they had just i know i don't think i'll ever go back i do think about it. this it's funny because i turned 40 this year and i guess you know you change as a person the older you get and oh, yeah. it's happening to me like on the dot at 40 i'm like well it'd be kind of nice to like live somewhere else i went up here to portland for this past year because of corona covid it's like there's not much going on in la so i was like well this is my chance to like see something else live near some trees and weather since LA is quiet right now but I'm planning on moving back at the end of the year down to LA but I think I'll always be on the west coast at least mm. because it's more like my speed and I don't know but you do learn that like it's kind of the same everywhere you know just where you want to be is what is what's best for you but it's hard to decide sometimes what is best but I do love the palm trees and I love the connections and I love all the friends and the opportunities I've had out in LA it's like kind of like stuff you could never do in a small town, well, you, you need the people you, there with you. You did it like a like a sizzle reel. You you wanted to wrestle somebody, and I'm not much of a uh, wrestler guy, so I didn't know who it was. But you put a reel together and talk about friends. And Martin Starr is in Milford. He's he's featured in Milford. But you had Martin yeah, yeah. Starr in there, Lauren Lapkus, uh, Matt Besser, mm-hmm. Garfunkel and Oates, Macaulay Culkin, Matt Walsh, Matt uh, Brower, uh, Steve Agee, and and Sam Levine. These are big names in the comedy world. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's um that's just all the people I've met over the years. We all just kind of came up together and uh, doing comedy. I performed at the Upright Citizens Brigade when I first moved out. You know, I'm just like alternative comedy is like where i come from and that's like what i do yeah for the most part so you just meet people you become friends and martin and i became friends long ago and he's done a bunch of stuff with me he's in like all kinds of my videos and here and there but he's just down to do cool stuff and he's definitely like a, you know a fan of just good projects over just doing something just to do a big thing you know which is nice to see he's a very genuine person and it's like you know you meet a lot of people in la who aren't necessarily as genuine because but like i don't fault them because you know you're trying to get ahead and it's like it's honestly like the hunger games in los angeles so it can definitely change people whether they know it or not or intend to but martin has been doing it since he was a kid he's on freaks and geeks yeah. you know, when he was like 13 or whatever so i think he's just stayed cool and stayed normal like a normal person so yeah i appreciate being pals with him and we uh, he came to my birthday party when i first, when I first sort of hung out i had a bouncy house <laughs> uh, rented and I was jumping off the roof. I had a, a oh, yeah, arcade. Yeah. I had a Skittles vending machine. This my life was like wild. We had cardboard <laughs> box tunnels that we'd crawl through the whole apartment. And uh, he came to that. The workaholics guys came to that. Eric Andre was my friend. He was there. It was like the who's who wow. before anyone was like the who's who. Then like a couple years later, everyone starts getting their shows. And that was the only part I ever had where police showed up. Because, oh really? Yeah. And it was also there was no alcohol either. <laughs> <laughs> It was all just wild young people, like, jumping on a bouncy house off of a roof. <laughs> I, I found that very interesting, you know, watching a, uh, a documentary about you, um, that you don't drink or, or smoke or do drugs. 
No, yeah, I never did. I was like straight edge with my brother. We were in a punk band in Milford, and uh, we were part of like that whole punk scene. But like, I do, I have, I tried alcohol at thirty five, <laughs> so I did. I broke my edge, but I never really intended to live a life of not doing it. I was just never interested. Yeah. It wasn't for me, it was kind of, I still don't need it or anything. It's just I've tried it now. I'm like, okay, I get it. I see why people like the tipsiness, but I'm very un, I, I, unhinged. I guess you could say, like, I don't need anything to go dance around in, you know in public in my underwear like i'll do that just when i wake up at 6 a.m so i mean you, uh, you watch I your videos you got to you got to assume you're on something watching the videos yeah. but you know what yeah. it, i think it gives me hope and it gives people hope that wow you can just have a, a very awesome constitution and and, and perform and, and you know put out entertaining quality uh, videos and you don't have to be high you don't have to be drunk but all your exactly right but all your characters are kind of like wow that guy is really out there yeah yeah my family we have definitely a, an odd sense of humor we got, i think we got it from my mom my mom's more the, the goofy weird one she's kind of like rubbed off on us so this is her strange sense of humor and she's like always laughing she's got a really big personality so i think that that her and ren and stimpy <laughs> are what shaped us as people in the 90s and 80s so you know it's yeah. funny too um so I, I, I was probably like I knew you from the uh, the the no bones guy, you know the no bones dance. Mm-hmm. I knew that. Yeah. And now yep. that I, I got to know you a little bit more from, um, uh, you know, finding out that you were doing Milford and this and that, and I dug a little bit deeper, and I'm like, oh my god, this guy from that guy from this thing from that thing. Yeah, and, yeah. <laughs> but the funny thing is, like a lot of people can play a lot of different characters, and you know who it is. They just look the same. You seem to take on physical um, differences between all of your characters. I couldn't believe the same guy in neutral was Keith, um, Apicary. Like it just didn't oh, make yeah, sense to me. Yeah. yeah I, I try to change as much as I physically can. You know, if it was like, if I was making a film, I would probably change even more. So, cause I'd have time to prepare and become that person. It's either like lose weight, gain weight, do that kind of thing. Yeah. I'm very much into that. Like really becoming someone else. It's like a obsession and just fun thing for me. But like I'm bouncing between characters so often I can't, do dedicate some of my life to that just for a video you know or for a yeah. little commercial here or whatever it is i'm doing but uh i do try to change as much as i can physically but have it look natural and appear natural like keith when i do live shows as keith abacary like i don't take a shower that morning i have actual <laughs> bo i smell really bad and people have commented on that like do like keith's live shows when he's doing his songs and when I actually it's funny because I met the girl i dated uh who the film is Mil- milford is dedicated to when i first met her she was, I was work, she worked for Adult Swim and I was going to Comic Con as Keith and I wasn't expecting to like meet someone I'd be attracted to down there. I was at Comic Con surrounded by nerds and I'm there as Keith Abbott the nerdiest guy in the world. I look like a train wreck, my hair is a mess <laughs> and I stink and she's with me all day as like my producer for this commercial. I was like, Oh no. I was like actually self conscious because I was like, Dang, and there's a girl here that like I'm attracted to. I felt <laughs> horrible. She's gonna think I'm really like this guy. And she did. She's like, oh, I thought you were just kind of like a crazy. She knew I was an actor. Yeah. But she's like, this guy is crazy looking because I just don't ever break character, especially if there's fans around, which there are at Comic-Con. So I just stay in character the whole time. And that was a hard, that was the best acting I'd ever done because I truly didn't want to even be a character that day. But anyways, I do try to change a lot in like the Ray Emsley peg leg character. I don't yeah. know if you've ever seen him. But oh, like, yeah. I look like I have a missing a leg. Yeah. I duct tape my foot to my butt and then I put my pants on like that and it just hides my leg. So I try. I like to really, really become these different people. I got to. I got to imagine you have a very strong core. Like the work that you do, you you have to. Yeah, I mean, you're skinny, right? You're, but you're in yeah, shape. Yeah. You're in shape, man. Uh, but you got to have a strong core to be doing that gymnastic stuff and jumping off of roofs and all the stunts. Yeah, it, I guess it keeps me in shape, and I've also just been kind of naturally lean. I've been fortunate. Uh, to just sort of be, I'm vegetarian, borderline vegan. That might help a little bit too. I don't eat too bad. I yeah. don't drink too often. I think that helps. But yeah, I'm very active, and I think that just keeps me in shape. So that's the thing. I got to keep doing this physical comedy, otherwise, I'll probably fall apart. It's like the stunts are actually they're harming me, but they're also keeping me healthy. It's <laughs> weird. Did it blow your mind when Trail Lawos got got the Skittles commercial just by goofing around? <laughs> yeah, yeah, it was. It was pretty strange. It was actually, a, it, that was like the second attempt that worked out. It was with Skittles. It made more sense. But I originally did the first trail videos for Butterfingers. It was like, oh, I'm just going to do a crazy spokesperson 
a guy who thinks he needs the help like a candy company. It's like basically like, oh, here's a lunatic in an alley trying to make commercials. I thought the presumptuousness of that mentality was funny. It's like, oh, here's a guy making, and they're really bad commercials. Oh, yeah. That's really But meant to be show. bad, yeah. They're, they're meant to be bad, but like it feels genuine coming from him. But you know the creator, me, was trying to make some <laughs> this horrible commercials. But the mentality of the guy is like, he's pompous. He's like, oh, here you go. Here's your commercials kind of. And the identifier for Butterfingers, someone at Butterfinger liked them, and they're like, oh, we'll feature them on our Yahoo video page. This was like in 2007 or something. It was so long ago. And I was like, okay, sure. That was like all I got from them. And then I was like, I decided to do a different candy at with Trail, where I was like, I'll have them advertise for Skittles. That kind of, you know, makes more sense because they have some alternative branding. Yeah. They do strange commercials. I did those, and those took off right away. The internet really liked them. Skittles featured them on their website at the at the time. Like, if you go to Skittles dot com, embedded was my video for like two years. Wow. And I was aware of this, and I was like, where? How much they were? I didn't talk to me, but I was like, they know of me, so I'm just gonna keep pushing this. And I kept making Skittles videos. I made, um, I forget the order of it, but like they sent me a gift. They sent me a boom box and I, I was like, okay, I'm going to take this boom box and make something with it. I made a dance video. Yeah. That did really well. They were like, oh, wow, this guy's doing really well. And then they were, they started giving um, out Skittles vending machines. They gave a Kim Kardashian, like a Jonas brother and all these other people. And Trail was like, they're not giving me one. <laughs> so I, in character, he made a video saying like, uh, I deserve a, a Skittles vending machine. And for all these reasons, he made a video and it was a contest. I entered it into a contest where you could win one, like a fan could win one, and whoever gets the most votes wins. So Trail entered the contest saying he deserved it, and I blew away the <laughs> vote. So I, I had like 25,000 votes, and like the second place had like 300 votes. Wow. So they were like, okay, here's a vending machine. But then with the vending machine, I was like, I need to go film something else with this. And I filmed an actual commercial. Like we got rented the gear and we shot it as professionally as we could. Where like the my character gets the vending machine, but it's also advertising for their new flavor. We filled it with the new flavor. So like we were basically just making them free commercials, just to be like, look, this is like a real thing. Like this, I I wanted to be the spokesperson so badly. I was like, I'm gonna force this to happen <laughs> by making good stuff. I sorry, this is a long story. But then uh, we made the commercial, and they were like, this is unbelievable. You guys are like just killing it over here. So then. We officially did real work together, and I became the spokesperson for a year for Skittles, and they had a contest where someone won uh, a Skittles pinball machine. They were flown out to be in the commercial with me, and my friend Paul, who's from Upton, he directed the whole thing. Uh, so yeah, we just kind of like, it, the, the mission was accomplished. I like officially worked with Skittles by badgering them with videos. It's amazing, and like I said earlier, you're probably the hardest working man in in showbiz right now. I mean, what, so what's the goal? What, I mean, what, where do you want to be? I'm sure you have something in mind. It's probably, well, anything. I didn't want to do commercials. I want to act. But is there something specific in your mind that you're shooting for? Uh, it's hard to, like, sum it up. But, like, I definitely have a specific. I just want to act. When it comes down to it, like, I just want to perform and act. I have to do everything in order to make that happen. Yeah. You have to film. You have to make music. You have to write. You have to make dance videos to get attention, to then get people to watch the stuff you care about. <laughs> Like, I play the game, and I just make the spammy, internet, silly content to get people to watch things like Milford and Neutral. Yeah. And I have to direct it and film it and make it to, in order to give myself a platform to act. But I would lo love to just show up and act on shows, which I have done. I've been on Disney shows for years, and I've worked in stuff forever. But to do that full-time is very hard. So in the downtime, I have to make this stuff to give myself more opportunity later. So at some point, I can eventually just show up, act, and go home. But I'll always want to still make films and things, I think. But yes, acting is the goal. The, the film and TV, basically what Jim Carrey has done is what I would like to do. And we're seeing a lot of different stuff from me because I, you know, as a person, I do like to dance. I do like making music. I like, so I am going to keep putting stuff out there. But the main goal has always been just acting in film and TV. And we've created our own shows for Adult Swim and Comedy Central and had pilots had deals and stuff so it's like fun and i'll keep doing it but like ultimately if i just get a job acting and performing that i'll be happy just because i need to get that out of my system first and foremost it's so funny with all and we didn't even talk about america's got talent but i i'm sure people oh, yeah <laughs> keith, keith apicary made it onto onto that and i'm sure persistence right that that's what got you on that show yeah it's uh so that's I don't know how much I'm supposed to talk about that show because it's a very strange situation. Okay. Where, like you can't. 
I can't talk bad about them, and I don't mean to talk bad about them, but <laughs> telling the truth tends to not be sound good on their part. Yeah. But I will say I was approached, and that's why I was on the show. Okay, All right. And it wasn't. It didn't end up being the way I wanted it to be, but I'm happy it happened because now new people yeah. have found me in my work, and it's great. But like, ultimately, I wasn't like, mm, this, it didn't turn out. I didn't expect to win or anything, but my experience was not what I was hoping it would be. And uh, what I, the creation that I did for the round two was not by my standards in, in a way. I okay. Guess. And you know what? I would <laughs> anyway, save I, you, know, that you have your own ideas, and it's just a reality show. It's like, whatever. It doesn't even matter. <laughs> save it for the tell-all book. Yeah, yeah. Someday I'll tell it. I mean, there's some juicy stuff in there, but... Uh, it was fun you watching that. You know, so I'm, again, watching... I, you could spend all day binging um, Nathan Barnett stuff on his YouTube page, and there's a couple spin-off YouTube pages, too. Dad and Keith Apicari has... Yeah, the Dad channel's the big one, I will That's say. That's huge. Like, yeah, tell me... T- talk about that a little yeah. bit, and I don't want to take up too much of your time. If you're cool... Oh, I'm, I could talk all day. I, you probably want to get out of here at some point. But, <laughs> no, 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 uh, I'm good. Yeah. I, I will. I do ramble, so I'll tend to. I'll try to like uh, rein it in a little bit here. But the dad channel, dad, dad is basically just another character. I do many characters. I usually put them all on the Nathan YouTube channel, just as a dumping ground for everything I make. But the dad character was a bigger story I wanted to tell, and I didn't want to put it on my channel because it would just confuse. I think people who are used to seeing many different characters, and they'd be like, "What is this now? This is the only <laughs> thing happening here." So I made a whole new channel, and it's funny because. Dad is verified on YouTube. There's a check mark next to his name as Dad. So <laughs> like people are like, "What is this?" It makes it more intriguing. Yeah, and that's why kind of why I wanted to do it. Is like, okay, people will see this and be like, "Who is this guy just named Dad?" He's basically a robot named Dadbot. It's very long. It's a sci-fi, uh, dramatic comedy. I guess you could say it's like <laughs> Twin Peaks mixed with Truman Show, mixed with uh, I don't. I had another reference for this, like. It's just very silly, okay. um, and there is a, a drama and sci-fi involved. But it's basically, Dad, I have songs and music videos. And I say they're like most legitimate music so- songs I've ever done. That's something I'm, tr- I'm working on now is doing more like DJ shows. Yep. Like I've been in like music videos for Marshmallow. I've worked with a lot of big artists. So I'm now using these connections for Dad and his music career. And I'm putting, putting out a music video in a couple of days. It's one of my bigger ones, of art, artist-wise. I worked with the Knox, who are very big, and I was in a music video for them recently. It was playing in like gyms and stuff everywhere. So now Dad is releasing his remix, and we went and shot a video in the same location that the visual video was shot. Anyways, Dad is like a, a pop star. It's like a bald, forty-year-old-looking man who looks like he works at Sears in the '70s, but he's like up on stage DJing and backflipping. And you're like, what am I looking at? So that's him, <laughs> but there's also a deep story. Yeah. And so there's two separate things going on. His music videos, and then there's a story. So uh, you can watch whatever you want. And uh, the dad audience is crazy. They're like obsessed. It's, I've never had like a fan base like this. Like one of the fans broke it down and said, "Well, you've always had fan. You've always had um, uh, fans. Like Keith Abigail had some uh, a lot of fans. Yeah. But I've never had a fan dumb. And oh. I guess that means like." They, there's like a rabbit audience who want all the information and they're obsessed. They have theories for like what it all means. Like they're breaking down the story because like, there is a lot to the story. Uh, this is the worst promo for my series <laughs> or character I've ever had. It's like, it's so hard to explain in like I one get it. thing. It's just a strange experience and is really good music. That's what I should say. Yeah. And it's different and it's, uh, it's content too. It's, it's something to watch. I mean, there's so many things to yeah. watch and yet so little. Um, it's great to have something like dad there to, uh, to watch. And look forward to as well. Um, Thank you. Yeah, that's, I, man, again, your career, I don't even think we scratched the surface. Trevor in real life and all the yell videos uh, yeah, that you've yeah, done, yeah, yeah. the gymnastics, the stunts, the annoying songs, uh, talking classics is a lot of fun as well. And, um, I mean, do you see yourself getting goofier? Do you see yourself um, doing more neutral and, and Milford type stuff? Um, I'll definitely do some more serious stuff because, like, you know, I've had 15 years of just craziness uh, of wild characters. Uh, it's harder to do the serious stuff because there's not really a place for that on YouTube. Like, no one goes to a YouTube channel to watch sure. short short dramas. You want to see something funny on the Internet, you go to TV and movie theaters to see longer dramas. So I don't do as much as that of that. So I still have a lot of to get out of my system, but I'll always make, be doing comedy. And, you know, that's what I, I'll probably do for my first feature film. It was, if it's not neutral, 
it'll probably be this other movie I, uh, I wrote called Las Vegas, L-O-S-S, Vegas. Okay. Uh, and it's a comedy. It's sort of like, in a way, a Wes Anderson-type film. It's like very silly. It's maybe like if Jim Carrey was in a Wes Anderson film. That's kind of how I should sell it. Okay. Uh, it would look very cinematic, like neutral, very pleasing, quirky, but a lot sillier than neutral. Uh, and obviously a lot sillier than Milford, because Milford is pretty straightforward but i want to do everything i just like you know you want to yep. make different stuff but uh comedy is like in my heart and that's like my main thing is just being silly so i'll do always that'll be always the further main well, thing if you've got uh, a casting I'll call for these stuff. things please let me know because i act i do a little bit a little bit oh, of nice. acting okay but i'm coming up on It'd 50 cool to have a milford local wouldn't it i think that i could be you know i could probably get some votes if, if we were to do a contest all I right, all right. <laughs> I think I can get some votes to be in your uh, next movie. Oh, and you're, I bef- you're in. You're already, <laughs> am yeah. I already in? Okay, Wait, this is recorded, Nathan. Yep. Okay. Legally, I'm binded <laughs> to putting you in the movie. So if we do the feature for Milford, you're in it. Well, you know, my son's out in L.A., so I need a, a reason to visit. Oh, there you go. Yeah. You can both be in it. Uh, before I let you go, my younger son, who's 13 years old, I was watching the documentary. I said, "Oh, uh, come here." This he's talking about Fortnite. And he comes in the room, I go, do you know this guy? And I showed him the, the No Bones dance. He goes, oh, my God, that's a guy from Fortnite. You, you, yeah, yeah, your yeah. dance is on Fortnite. That's a pretty big deal as well. Yeah, so that's another thing I'm not technically supposed to talk about. Oh. But I know they'll never really hear this. <laughs> uh, because, yep, they 100% used my dance. And uh, you can see it, and it's very obvious. They were taking many people's dances at the time and just thinking it didn't matter, no one care. But... I uh, pursued it for a good half a year, and uh, it worked out okay in the end. It's yeah. still, you know, these people have made billions of dollars off of something I created. I didn't realize and that was the case. Oh, okay. Yeah, I mean, it's like the biggest game in the world. It's a bummer because I actually do kind of like Fortnite. And, yeah. like, I hated it forever, but I tried it <laughs> as my dad character. He does live streams, and I was like, all right, I'm going to play Fortnite, ironically. <laughs> Turns out it's actually really fun. They were right. There's a reason people love it. So, but the, they do. They have these little dances, and they take and like my no bones dance is a very popular thing on the internet. So they, you know, copied it and did it, and uh, it's uh, they probably made so much money off of it. And it's a bummer because I was in the airport one time and I saw there was these two kids. They didn't know each other. They were standing like 20 feet away. They were both with their families, and one kid starts doing the floss dance, which a lot of people call the backpack kid dance. Yeah which he didn't create. He actually took it from someone else, FYI, for anyone who's listening and cares. just want to give a <laughs> shout-out to the actual creator, even though I don't know who it is. But this kid starts doing that dance, and the little kid recognizes it because they probably both play Fortnite. Yeah. So then that kid sort of responds by showing the other kid from a distance, like, oh, I know those dances, and he starts doing my dance. He wow. starts doing the no-bones dance where he's flopping his arms, and I'm thinking, this kid has, he's like seven years old. He has no idea. The guy who created that is standing right next to him and it was so like a gut punch. Wow. That's like the story of my life. My stuff gets stolen a lot. And like it just when you don't know you're stealing it because you don't know who originally created it. Like a second ago, I couldn't tell you the creator of the kid, the guy who did the floss dance. Yeah. Which this other kid, backpack kid, did later. Sorry, I'm going like to get into the drama of stolen goofy internet dances. No, that's really but interesting this, stuff. This kid was doing my dance. And I'm like, I made this. I remember when I came up with that dance in 2008 or whatever. I made the video. I was like thinking of weird things to do and now here i am like 10 years later in the airport doing it if only i had the credit i would be so much more popular and i could be <laughs> making i'd probably be in so much more stuff and people are like oh this guy has made all of these things that we know but we don't know about him because yeah. that's the way the internet works it's a wild west and people steal stuff and then the, the creators die hungry and corporations get rich it's like the guy who created batman died in the name yeah, of the right. grave and this, I, I always think I can't end up like that guy. I gotta keep making stuff. <laughs> and this happened to you a lot. And there's a there's a video, uh, like a little documentary on YouTube about it. Uh, but you know, like memes and and the Fortnite thing and YouTube and uh, commercials and whatnot. A lot of people stole a lot of, especially you doing the gymnastics and the stunts and you're falling from things. Mm-hmm. And a lot of those images and those short videos were stolen from you. I mean, do you think that it's safe to say that you're one of the most stolen? artistic figures I, I think i'm up there at least because i'm not sure who i'm competing against hopefully i'm not the high well hopefully i am the highest i am one of the most stolen people and I, other people don't have to live through it as badly as i did but like it's a weird thing because it's like i don't ever want to complain because i'm glad people are seeing my stuff but like imagine how much more right, people would right. see my stuff if i was ever just credited 
or just given the job instead of giving it to someone else to do what I did. Like in the new movie Fall, uh, what is it called? I forget. Oh, oh, oh uh, um, Free Guy. Ryan Reynolds. Yeah, Free, free guy. guy. Yeah. What's his name? Uh, Channing Tatum does my no bone stance. That's right. In that movie. Oh, it's that's very right. Small, but it's, I watched it a couple times. It's triple check. People were sending it to me. He's definitely doing a not as great version of my <laughs> dance because I imagine how it went down. Like, and my friend Maddie is actually in that movie. He uh, he's like a gamer who's like yelling at his mom in the background. Oh yeah, that's right. Yeah, uh, yeah. He's in the dad series. Maddie's amazing. So it's like, oh gosh, here's uh, what's his name, Chain Tatum, doing my. I can imagine the director saying, "Here's a couple of dances that are popular on the internet. Can you do this one? Do this <laughs> one, and we'll just drop one of them in because they want to be like a recognizable." So the person who told him to do this i'm guessing doesn't even know what the dance is doesn't know who created it it's just a coincidence that the guy who did create it ends up seeing the movie and it's like oh there's the floppy dance that yeah and it, it's it's a very debatable thing because it's like it is just a sloppy arm thing but it's a very specific vague thing so it's like you could say anyone would do it but to do it in the setting he's doing it because it's game related yeah because fortnite took it and fortnite definitely stole it from me so it's like okay <laughs> By association. It's dance, even though it's not, it's a dumb thing, but it is my thing. <laughs> yeah, well, you know what? I think you should have been compensated because you know how much Disney got and how much Marvel got for the little things that they used in that movie? Like millions of dollars. Yeah, that's the thing. So this, this is where I dealt with, uh, it's tricky because when you have imagery or a trademark or a drawing or a shape, you can make money off it. You can't trademark or claim a physical movement. No. Whether it's no, no, you just it's, you can only do it if it's a choreographed dance that tells a story. Yeah. I talked to the trademark. You looked office. into this. It has to be a certain length. <laughs> it has to tell a story in order to be known as recognized as a piece of work that can then be trademarked. All right. So it's very tricky. So, but I, I think it's strange. I think they're working at fixing that because there are choreographers and dancers who are having this stuff stolen. Because, and they created what they wouldn't be put in this product and sold if this person hadn't created it. So they're not being compensated. It's a very strange thing. I don't, this isn't what my life is about. It's just a part of my <laughs> journey of like, well, I made stuff and it got ripped off. Great. I'm just going to keep going. I don't care ultimately in the end because I just want to like do bigger and better things than that. Live and learn. It's just the frustration on the way, you know? Yeah, live and learn. Well, this exactly, this exactly. turned from a uh, interview to a podcast, so I'm happy with that. Yeah. That's fine. <laughs> well, I appreciate you having me. I'm, I do tend to ramble. So no, 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 no. Like I do too. Pleasurable rambling. I just love talking to interesting people, and you certainly are interesting, Nathan. And uh, anybody you oh, want to anybody you want to shout out to who's listening in the area? Uh, I guess uh, my mom and dad, who are in Milford right now, uh, Tom and Mary Ellen Barnett. Uh, I don't know. I don't know if I know any other people who live in Milford anymore. To well, be how honest. about Jake from the Chop Shop? I heard you uh, oh, shout Jake out to him. Chop He's Shop. still here. Yes, Jake, my friend from high school. Uh, we went to Medway together. Yes, that's probably the only person I know in Milford now. Everyone's moved sort of a surrounding town. How about uh, John but, uh, John Romilio? Do you remember John Romilio? John Romilio? I don't know if he's in Milford still, but he's definitely oh, he is. nearby. No, he is. Oh, he is. I'm friends with okay. his. I'm friends with him and his his wife. His wife is on a committee with me. We do the uh, Fourth of July okay. parade. I wasn't so. sure if he was in Milford. Okay, oh, his wife is amazing. Yeah, I'll say I'm saying hi, to John. Also, Sarah Greenwood and Jose. Uh, now you're reminding me of everybody. In Milford. <laughs> All right, buddy. Thank you so much. All right. Thank you. See ya.